Now I have some mail to open. I bought this when I was drunk and stoned very late at night. What I bought it. Very sweet. All are welcome here. There's definitely somewhat of a connotation with these kinds of shops that are, oh, shall we say a stone's throw away from militia movement and um, well, given the, the clientele of the last shop, it's not exactly untrue, but I want to get away from that here, so. No malicious here. Pawn Man likes to suck dick. Not lately, though. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like a hetero binge. What? All right, so we got the sign. I think this is a gold and silver from the follower. You got an unboxing video. Oh, yeah. Man, they sent a lot of stuff. Look at all this stuff. It's gonna take me a minute to go through. It's Saturday, I close at two, it's 2.30, but uh, I, I'm gonna go through this. I'd like to get him paid right away. Holy shit, Kendall sent me a ton of stuff. Thank you, Kendall. It's gonna take me a while to go through. I honestly don't know what the fuck these are, or what to pay them, but I'll figure something out. Some vintage postcards. Honestly, I don't like this photo. You know, I'm sure all of you have seen this photo and I'm sure a lot of you know, but this photo, she had no idea this photo existed until like 20 years after it happened and he grabbed her and kissed her. She has no idea who this guy is. He's just some guy who grabbed her and like forcibly kissed her on the street. So yeah, it's kind of not a great backstory to this photo, even though it uh, you know, symbolizes the allies winning. So some cool collectible silver, this Minotaur Labyrinth of Crete, 1.5 ounces, this Pam. Animals of Africa, Nile Crocodile, uh, Whale Shark, this ink and gold, which is actually silver, it's just overlaid. Let's see here, this is probably not terribly expensive. A couple ounces of silver. These I'm gonna get a big premium on online. These are 2021s, which is awesome. I like never see 2021s. Some boomer shit, the stuff isn't very great, and then some currency pieces. Now I gotta sit here and figure out what I can pay. The boomer shit's definitely not gonna be expensive. Spot on silver right now is about 26 and a half. So these are 3.94 tri ounces right here. I'll pay 30, 34 an ounce. All right, so I'm gonna pay him $134 for these, but these hand poured pieces go for big bucks. I might be able to ask 100 bucks on each one. Two 2021s, a Libertad and an Eagle. I'll pay 35 each on these. Coins are not very valuable. This 1942 dime is the only silver piece that he sent me. And we just settled on a price. I didn't film the whole thing. Um, I'm paying him $630 for all of this stuff. So like this is really collectible silver. These are going for 100 second hand. These are going for 100 second hand. This is going for 150. This is going for 150. This is silver. Uh, quote unquote ink and gold, it's overlaid. Again, I don't know what the fuck these are, but you basically just gave them to me. And then this, I'm gonna stick up on my community board, but not this. I don't like, like knowing what I know about this image, I don't like it. This is cool. All right, 630 bucks. I'll probably make about 200 bucks on this deal. If that, 150 to 200. Well, what's the motto? What's the motto? A profit is a profit. Such a lovely community board. Dead moths, original 9-11 patch, some, something that was drawn by a person that lives in the area who is not a child. The person who drew that's like 70. I got these Pawn Man t-shirts available. I just sold my first one. You can DM me to get one. Uh, you can also get them from my merch store. It's a little bit cheaper to do it that way, but if you get it from me, number one, it helps me more. Number two, you get some Pawn Man buttons and I sign one of them, so. It's a little bit more personalized if you get it from me. The t-shirts are 30 bucks, includes tax and shipping, and yeah, just DM me if you wanna get one. I have a few different designs, and I also have, they come in a few different colors. Such colors include red and pink. Again, DM me if you wanna get some Pawn Man merch. What is going on, you guys? We're Between the Pawn. I'm Evan Kale, and I own a gold and silver business. As always, how's the week been? Getting busier and busier. So one problem that I've had recently is my cash flow. I keep buying stuff 
for a great price, but it's stuff that's kind of expensive to begin with and I'm tying up money into it just by having it here and it's like not stuff I'm gonna necessarily turn very quick. For example, I bought this universal Genevieve 10 karat gold filled watch from like the 1960s. It's vintage, it's beautiful. I paid 350 bucks for this thing. I'm trying to get at least 500 on it, but I might sit on this for a couple months and $350 for my business is, well, not 1%, but it's larger than half a percent. So I need to not get bogged down on too, too much of this stuff. And that is what makes me wary about advertising on social media that I'm buying from people is I'm gonna just get flooded with people trying to sell me stuff like this where it's cool or, you know, it's like one of those items that, it, you know, I'd love to have it here, I'd love to have it on camera, I'd love to film me doing a deal about it. But the reality is I'm running a business and I can't afford to get bogged down on some of this stuff. So that's making me a little bit nervous. I also like, I bought a ton of Morgan Silver dollars. Pretty soon you guys are gonna see a deal that I filmed where I bought like 35 or 36 of them and I'm gonna make a lot of money on it, but unless I'm trying to blow them out, it's gonna take me a while to sell them all. So like I just had, I came in this morning and there's a guy waiting for me outside and I bought these at a great price and there's a great profit to be made here. But you know, I, I have to ask myself, do I wanna get a quick payout or do I wanna play it for the long haul and get more money by doing it that way? Cause like I could blow these out right now at $27 each. I could just take my money off the table and make uh, 150, 200 bucks off of, off of these Morgans that I bought. But I would rather put them on eBay for what they're actually worth and make $1,000 on it. However, you know, like I said, it's gonna take me a while to do that. So problems with the business. Business problems, as they say. What else has been going on this week? Well, yesterday was the 5th of July. Uh, a lot of people took yesterday off in observance of the 4th. I did not. And I did not partly because of the, the tea set lady. She, you know, I told her I was gonna be here yesterday. And she said, okay, I'll be in. Didn't come in. Called me again, texted me again yesterday. Didn't come in said that she did try to come in. She said that the doors were locked. It's like, well, you went to the wrong place. I've been here all day. And I, you have my address. You have all the information you need. I have said to you, you know, like I've exchanged a, no less than a dozen phone calls with this lady. I'm at the end of my patience with her. So, and I'm not even going to come up or I'm not even gonna make a lot of money on this deal either. Like maybe a couple hundred dollars, maybe if I'm lucky, it's to the point where it's like kind of just not worth it. So, oh yeah, yeah, some people. So the tea set thing yesterday kind of pissed me off. I kind of, well, I didn't come in here just for her. I, and I did some other stuff here. So it was good to be in here, but I was pretty annoyed. And I also wasn't surprised in the least bit. I was like, oh, driving in, I know she's not coming. She didn't come. Um, I wanna talk about my Invisalign because a lot of you guys have noticed and commented on it. Um, so every year I have New Year's resolutions or I pick one thing to better my life and I always follow through with it. Well, not always, one time I gave up soda and then I started drinking soda again. Most of the, these New Year's resolutions I follow through permanently. Anyway, so this year it was to get my teeth fixed because my teeth have been awful my whole life. I've, I never had braces as a kid. I had, what do we get? We got spacers put in and my dad got into some classical herald fight with the orthodontist and threatened to sue him or something like that. So I remember my dad being like, son, you can take out those spacers. We're never going back to that bastard again. And yeah, then I took out my spacers and never got braces. So, you know, I, I go to the dentist and like the dentist always gives me shit about my teeth and like I make TikToks and people write rude things that usually don't get to me, but lately it's kind of just like, eh, I'm kind of sick of this. So, okay, if I'm ever spitting on myself, uh, that's what that is. There was, I think it was the I quit video. I was like, it was when I first got those in and I had them in, it was just like, Pfft. you know, I went in to get, I went in for like a checkup and they were like, okay, well, we're going to put the rubber bands on now. This was like three months after they first gave me these Invisalign. And I'm like, oh, okay, rubber bands. You didn't mention that when you put them on. Oh, okay, fine, put, let's do the rubber bands. How long do I have to have the rubber bands on for? Always. Why the fuck did you start me with that then? Why the fuck do you make it worse three months in? So I've got these like silly rubber bands and I don't like them. Uh, um, but luckily I won't have these on for too long. Probably best case scenario by Christmas, I'll get them off. Worst case scenario, uh, like mid next spring, somewhere in that region. But when I take them off though, I just want to quickly say, my teeth are getting worse before they get better. There's like, there's some gnarly shit going on here. I have this like crazy gap right now in my teeth. It looks, I look so fucking inbred when I don't have these things in. I either have to look like a child with, with my little like puberty braces or I have to take them off and look like I'm, in, I'm inbred with the big gap in my tooth and my missing tooth down here because I had to pull a tooth. Anyway, so that's what's going on with my mouth. And if you see me, see I'm doing it right now, spitting on myself, then that's why. It's not because I've dropped too many IQ points from drinking and smoking yet. We'll just jump into the questions.
First question coming in from Matthew Glasspool. He wants to know, speaking of merch, do I sell my books at my store? Why, yes, I do. You can come on in, you can get my books. I'll even sign them for you. Otherwise, if you guys want to buy my books, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, they're in ebook, they're in paperback, or I will sell you a signed copy if you DM me on Instagram or TikTok. Um, this is about my life and times as an Uber driver. This is two books put together. I have like, I have a volume one and a volume two. And then this is a special edition, which includes like 15 bonus stories. Most of them are funny. Some of them are sad. Some of them are dramatic, but it's, I don't know. If you like me and you like my humor and you like using Uber and you're curious about how the service works and why it's a fucking terrible way to make money, this book is for you. I've driven prostitutes, drug dealers, cleaned up puke, been stalked by passengers, and had a gun pointed at me. And that was just my first month. Also, just know that I was in a different place then than I am now, and not that this book hasn't aged well, but I'm a fucking asshole in this book, and I'm, I feel like I'm a little bit less of one now. Little bit, anyway, just a little bit. Um, and then this one is a fiction book about Jewish American soldiers that discover Hitler's still alive in the 1950s. They're like an elite secret unit and they go after him like a Bin Laden style raid. So I had the second one, uh, I actually just gave it to a friend to peer edit or peer review and read and tell me if it's good or not. So I have another one of these coming out very soon. Um, and I, I don't know if I'll write a third one because I don't sell a ton of copies and these books take me a lot of time to write, but I do love the story that I've come up with. Anyway, so check out my books. Get them on Amazon. Rate my books too, it does help me. Okay, next question coming in. The next question is from Matthew Lawrence. Matthew writes, what is the best way to dollar cost into silver with a buy and sell shop like yours? So silver is a long haul game. You do not get it hoping to get a quick buck out of it. If you do, you're going about it all wrong and you're fucking not listening to me when I talk on this show because I, I say it again and again. Get a little bit every month, every month, every month. That is the best way to do it. I recommend getting 10 ounces a month, just every month. And that way you're gonna be able to dollar cost your average when the price goes up, when it's a good point to sell. I think silver's a buy at, under, at $50 an ounce or less. I'm not saying pay $50 an ounce right now in the market as of this moment is $26.50. You know, don't pay more than 35. You know, the spot price and the, and the price that people were willing to pay are very different items or very different numbers right now. And it doesn't seem to be correcting. I'm hoping it will correct soon. But just get a little bit every month. And if silver spikes, don't think, oh, I just made a bunch of money. I can sell it. That's a dumb way to do it. Like, here's a good example. So I sold this kid when I worked at the old shop. You know, the markets a year and a half ago were, were a completely different animal. I didn't have to pay the premiums that I have to pay now. I could buy eagles at under the spot price. So mar the spot price was 20. I was selling eagles at 22 and I was buying them at 19. So this, this, Kid came in and he bought a tube of eagles from me for 400 bucks, 20, and then silver went up to 22 and he tried to sell it to me and I offered him what he paid. And he's like, well, the market went up. And I was like, yeah, but I'm, you know, just because it goes up doesn't mean I pay, I pay the market price. I just don't do that. And this kid got so pissed at me. And it's like, that's, you're going about buying and selling silver all wrong. You don't do it like that. You don't try and buy and sell within the span of two weeks. That two eagles today is worth 700. So if that kid would have held onto it, he did sell it back too. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. But if he would have just held onto it for a year and a half, he would have almost doubled his money. So that's how you go about doing it is you just have to know when to get in, know when to get out and buy in increments a little bit, a little bit, a little bit continuously. Okay, last question. Tony Do oh, shit. Do Dobasiwix? Dobasiwix? Sorry, I'm trying. I bet you get that a lot, Tony. Tony wants to know, so wait, did the old guy fire you or did you quit? Did you have a good relationship with the guy, just not his girlfriend, or did en did everything end up rotten in it? Did everything end up rotting anyway? Love your vids. Thanks for the content. Christ. Can I read? I don't wanna keep talking about this. The fact is I just need to move on with my life and stop being so angry about everything that happened, especially because it fucking worked out for me and then some, it's just, I was mistreated and I'm still flabbergasted and angered that all of this happened for no good reason. I, I, I was subjected to so much bullshit by this woman for fucking God if I know what reason. She was jealous of me for, again, what, 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 why? The, okay, so, so I'm beating around the bush. So to answer your question, no, I quit. And if you ask them, I quit and I quit with prejudice. But the reality is it, it was turned into a toxic environment 
that I could not exist, like I couldn't do my job in. I couldn't be there. I would be so stressed out in the morning driving there. I'd like wake up in the morning and I'd just start swearing. It's like, God damn it, I have to go through this fucking bullshit today because of this crazy woman. What makes me sad about it is I had a great relationship with him. He was like kind of like a second father to me for a brief period of time. Yeah, about a year ago this weekend, I went up to his cabin with him, just he and I, and we had such a great bonding experience. And yeah, I mean, she just trashed that because she didn't like me for, you know, fuck if I know why. But the fact is, is he allowed it to happen. It was his business. When she started acting crazy and rocking the boat, which started in about November, he could have put his foot down. He could have been like, look, this is a business. We're making money. He's profiting. What? What part about this is a problem? The point of a business is it makes money. And if it's not doing that, then it's not a good business. So he could have done something about it and he just allowed it to happen. And he allowed me to be subjected to all this bullshit. But again, I want to stop talking about it. I need to move on with my life. I need to just say it was a learning experience. And frankly, look, I am grateful for the tutelage that he gave me. I wouldn't be in this business having all this success, having elevated myself out of poverty were it not for him teaching me. So I am grateful in that regard. Let's make that the last that we talk about them. I know I had a bit of slight in the last episode of Pawn Man, I called them a naughty name. I'm gonna just like, whatever, fuck them. Okay, all right, finally, you guys, um, if you're selling stuff, I am always buying this right here on my desk is a bag of stuff I just bought from a follower. I haven't even gone through it yet, I just got the package, but I am actively buying bullion, coins, collectibles, scrap stuff. Like I said, I don't want expensive stuff that's gonna be hard for me to sell. Like if you have like a really expensive vintage watch, I probably don't want it. I just don't wanna put that kind of capital into it. If you like, if you have a Pokemon card collection, awesome. But unless you're trying to get quick cash for it, I probably don't want it because I don't wanna sink a bunch of money into a collectible where the bubble could pop. I don't know what's gonna happen with Pokemon cards. Um, I just bought two of them yesterday for, I bought one for 125 and the other one for 250. So you know, I need to get my money out on this stuff. But bullion, Junk silver, coins, jewelry, scrap jewelry, that is what I'm actively buying. I like to think that I pay more fairly than anyone you're gonna find around town. From what I hear from people who buy, who sell to me, I do. So just DM me if you wanna sell me stuff. Hit that notification button so you know when new episodes of Pond Man are coming out, like this video. Please share it around. I could really use some more reviews. I put so much time. My Patreons put so much money into the show and like, you know, it's growing, but it's not growing very fast. So I could really use some more reviews, get my books, get my other stuff. And I will see you guys back here for another episode of Pond Man. And post your questions below. I'll answer them in the next episode. Later, guys.